Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been, well, it's been a long time since my last confession. How long, my son? Well, I'm a bit more than embarrassed to admit it. Can we just let it go? It, it's been a while. No, no, it's, it's part of the process. I need to know how long so that I can evaluate your sins against the time during which they were committed. Say, as an example, you had five sins of varying degree to which you are to confess, and they happened within one 24-hour period. That would be much different than within two years. You see what I mean? Yes, but it's, it's been more than two years, Father. Let's approach this a different way. How old are you, my son? 66, Father. Well, then you understand the process, I'm sure. Uh, have you been a Catholic the entire term of your life? Well, yes and no, Father. And that's one of the things I thought I might speak to you about. Mm, I see. Uh, perhaps you'd like to come back at a later time after you've had a chance to pray on this and, and ask Jesus for guidance. No, no. I'd, I'd, I'd rather get it over with right now. Maybe that's not the right way to describe how I feel. Uh, well, probably not, but uh, that's from my perspective anyway. Un unless there's something driving you uh, to the immediacy of your confession. Such as? Well, such as death, I suppose. Well, no, no more than anyone else who's 66 years of age, Father. So you're in good health. And as far as I know, and thanks for asking. Certainly. Well, are you still there? Yes, Father. I'm just considering how best to begin. If every question I ask takes this much contemplation, then perhaps we should consider doing this in installments. Well, that hurts. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm just trying to help move this confession along a little bit. I'm about the same age as you, and frankly, I'd like to finish this confession before being called home to God. I mean, is there some likelihood of that? I mean, how's your health, Father? Good, thanks. So, how long? Well, as near as I recall, about 50 years, I suppose. It's been about 50 years since my last confession. Maybe a bit more, maybe not. Jesus, that's that's half a century. Yeah, I know. Were you born a Catholic uh, of Catholic parents? Oh, yes, Italian Catholic mother. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. So, did you fall away from the church? In a manner. In a manner? Well, I was Jewish for a while. Jesus was a Jew? I recall that. Say, do you remember the joke about that? The Jew who converts to Catholicism. He goes into the confessional for the first time and says, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And I think you know my lawyer, Mr. Goldberg, here. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> but it's still funny, though. <laughs> oh, hey, 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 how about this one? Okay. A priest has to take some time off, see? So he calls his friend, a rabbi, and asks him to fill in for him in the confessional. <laughs> now, to help him along, the priest and the rabbi are in the priest chamber together, and a woman comes in and kneels in the confessional. She says, bless me, Father, blah, 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 and the priest asks for her sins. She says that she committed adultery three times. Mm -hmm. The priest says, say three Hail Marys and four Our Fathers and put five dollars in the collection as you leave. So that, now, a couple minutes later, Another woman walks in and confesses to the exact same sin. The priest says, say three Hail Marys and four Our Fathers and put five dollars in the collection as you leave, just as before. Hmm. Well, the rabbi, now he's, he's got this figured out. Right. And he says, okay, I got it. You can leave me alone here. So the priest leaves and he takes care of his errands. And uh, as soon as he does, uh, uh, this woman walks into the confessional and says, bless me, Father, and so on. Uh, the rabbi asks her for her sins, and the woman says she'd committed adultery once. So the rabbi says, say three Hail Marys and four Our Fathers, and put five dollars in the collection at the door, and go out, and do it two more times. We've got a special this week, three for five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got a special Jesus. Okay, uh, special. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, did 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 you disavow your Catholic faith for Judaism? Uh, no, I was uh, I was attending a Catholic university at the time. In fact, the University of San Francisco Jesuit. Jesuit. Yeah. 
Now I understand. Here you go. A guy walks up to a Franciscan and a Jesuit who are talking on the street in front of a local parish and asks him, Excuse me, fathers, but how many novenas must I say to get a Mercedes Benz? The Franciscan asks the guy, What's a Mercedes Benz? And the Jesuit asks him, What's a novena? <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, well, anyway, so Rabbi Dave, he was the head of Judaic studies at the university, and he was just a wonderful man with keen insight. I suppose I should add that he didn't proselytize. Now, this was just something that happened. I thought you might get your religion wholesale. Well, kind of, you know, do away with the middleman. Jesus? Was that an exclamation or a question? Is a question. Well, yes and no. I just found such incredible peace during services, during meditation. I needed that at that time of my life. So where are we, Father? <laughs> I just thought of something funny. Did you hear the one about the guy who left Des Moines for Los Angeles one day? But before he left town, he was so overcome by the urge to have sex, he stopped into a brothel that he knew of, and he had sex. Well, he was so immediately overcome with guilt that he sought out confession. And upon learning of his sin, the priest prescribed 5,000 Hail Marys, which the guy said as he drove along once he left the church, you see. And when he got to L.A., once again he experienced the same sexual longing and once again found solace in a local brothel. Predictably, though, he felt immense guilt again and went to a local church confessional. The priest then gave him penance of three Hail Marys. The man says, in Des Moines, I was given a penance of 5,000 Hail Marys for the same sin. The priest says, what do they know about fucking, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> fornication <laughs> in Des Moines. Oh gosh, that would just tickle me. <laughs> oh, what do they know oh. about fornication in Des Moines? I like that. Oh, what do oh, they know about? Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Serious now. <laughs> Serious now. Are, are you a Catholic again in a matter of speaking? Wait a minute now. Wait, wait, wait. I just remembered an old one about the taffy pull at St. Peter's. <laughs> the drum priest? Yeah. yeah. Peter pull Peter pull at St. Taffy. <laughs> God, I love that one. How about, how about a rabbi, a priest, and a minister walk into a bar? <laughs> and the bartender looks at the three of them and says, What's this? A joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a classic too. Oh. So there's a girl in Sunday school, and uh, she answers the sister's sister's question. What do you want to be when you grow up? And she says, a prostitute. Well, sister goes nuts, and she asks, what did you say? And the girl says, a prostitute. Sister says, oh, thank God. I thought she said a Protestant. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I have a Protestant that knows my Protestant ones. Uh, oh, uh, well, uh, you mean a prostitute? The same thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was it you asked, Father? Oh, uh, <clears throat> well, okay, all right. I, are you Catholic again? Right, well, I, I don't think I was not. Double negative. Let me think about that. Well, I mean, there was no time when I considered myself not a Catholic too. Still a double negative. Try this. Yes. Yes. Good. You were baptized. Confirmed? Yes. Which parish? I was baptized in Chicago and the rest in Los Angeles. My first communion and then confirmation later in the San Francisco area. And you attended a Catholic university where you graduated? Yes. So why would you not participate in arguably one of the most important sacraments of the church? I was very busy. No, that won't do. No, one cannot be that busy for 50 years. Or plus or minus. Yes, plus or minus. That he or she could not afford to take a few minutes to commune with Jesus? I mean, what if something had have happened to you along the way, mm -hmm. and you were presented at the door to God laden with sins for which absolution would have been granted? Well, in that case, uh, Virgil probably would have given me my guided tour of my new home instead of Beatrice. That is not a subject to be taken lightly. I know that, and, and I apologize for that. How do we begin? 
Hey, is that a smartphone on in there? No, no. no. Yes, it is. I can, I can hear the virtual keys clicking. All right, if you must know, I'm texting the Monsignor to better understand our next steps here. Should we wait for him to text back? Let's just give him a minute or two. Can you take care of the confessor in the next booth over there while we wait? Confessional? And, and no, 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 it's no, there's nobody there, so let's just sit tight. I'm kneeling. I know, but you can kneel tight. Oh, I suppose you could. While we're waiting, hey, did you hear the one about this drunk who staggers into a Catholic church and he sits down in the confessional and says nothing? After a few minutes, the priest coughs to attract the man's attention. <clears throat> But still, this guy is absolutely silent. So, the priest knocks on the wall a couple of times, trying to get the guy to speak. Finally, the drunk says, No use knocking, buddy. There's no paper in here either. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh wait, wait. Oh, Monsignor got back to me here. Yeah, yeah. yeah What's yeah. he saying? Uh, says I'm on my own. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Suppose we start with a selection of sins and kind of go down from there on the list. Should I stop you when uh, you get to the one I think I may have committed? You do remember the types of sins from our catechism, don't you? Well, I could probably use a little refresher. Well, I could use one too. Give me, give me a, just a little second here so I can clear my throat. I, I got a little. <coughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Ah, much clearer now. Uh, in the catechism of our church it says that and i quote the works of the flesh are plain fornication stop well let me finish before you stop me just yet no sorry, sorry. say are you bill clinton no hugh grant father okay so where was i oh yeah fornication impurity licentiousness idolatry sorcery enmity Strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. Which would you like to talk about? Murder. You didn't mention murder. What? O.J.? Not me. Have you committed murder, my son? Oh, God, no. I just thought that murder ought to be uh, right up on my list of uh, very, very severe sins on the tippy top, you know. It is, it is, but, but let's deal with those sins most common to man, such as fornication. In the last 50 years, have you committed fornication outside of holy matrimony? What are you doing? Uh, I'm counting. Just, just yes or no? Yes. Okay, okay, and what about impurity? Well, not real clear of its definition in this context. It means impure, as in lustful, as an example. Well, I wouldn't have fornicated so much if I hadn't had impure thoughts, would I, Father? So? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Now we're on to something. And, and what of licentiousness? Same thing, really, isn't it? Let's call it the same. Yes. Masturbation? Right now, I'm just kneeling here, Father. Oh, no, I mean in the past. And, 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 and why am I asking? Never mind. What, what of jealousy, anger, and selfishness? Have you sinned in these areas too? Of course. Do you have an app for this sort of thing? No, no. No app. I wish we did, though. <laughs> Think of it. It'd make my life a lot easier. So, are you married now? Yes. Mm. You were married in the church? Well, in a church. Not a synagogue. No, a real Christian church, just not Catholic. How long have you been with this woman? Mm, who said it was a woman? <sighs> kidding, Father. Okay, so now that's very funny in a contemporary sort of way. My wife is a woman, always has been too. Your wife? No, uh, a woman. No, 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 no. How, how long have you been married to this obviously very patient woman? Yeah, about 11 years now. And you are 66 years of age, so you were married before. Yes. How many times? Are you still there? Mm, no, no paper in this one either, buddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny.
how many times married? Let's see. Uh, I'm just counting. I'm... Okay, skip it. Skip it. You've been married before some number of times. But I fornicated a lot more than I was married. I take comfort in knowing that. <laughs> I'm sorry. About what? About, about waiting so long to seek out solution from our sins. This whole idea started when I was rereading Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, and I honestly and truly believe in the healing power of absolution and forgiveness. It got me to thinking about confession. I suppose I just sort of pushed everything down within me, everything I did that I knew was wrong, every bad faith interaction. But how on earth, how on earth, Father, does one go about seeking forgiveness after five decades of occasional bad judgment? More Jesuit crap. Crap! Joyce! Okay, so I think, I, I think you're onto something here. Tell me something. Do you recall doing anything right in the last five no, decades? Yeah, lots of times, Father. Objectively, I can say that. I just don't like talking about it. I keep those things to myself, too. It's like the one about the German who just last week went to confessional. And he told the priest that during the war, he had hidden a Jew in his basement. And the priest tells him, that's not a sin. You may have well saved this man's life, my son. The old German says, yes, but I charged him 50 marks a month room and board. And the priest says, well, that wasn't very noble, but it doesn't negate the overall good of your action. And the old German says, thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He says, oh, just one more thing. Do, Do I, I have, have to, to tell him the war is over? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Lord. So, so like all of us, God's mm -hmm. creatures, you are a living, breathing dichotomy. Some of us tend to participate more thoroughly in life and rack up, if you will, a lot of good and a lot of bad. I understand. I've always defined myself against sometimes what seem like profound odds rather than allowing others the task. Along the way, I didn't fully appreciate what I had done to others to reach my goals. Define yourself. My God, you're, you're an existentialist too? I was a follower of Sartre, yes. I still am, I suppose. I know it's arcane, but still effective, I think. Anything else I should know before I consider how best to proceed? Well, I'm also a universalist minister. So you're a Catholic, Jewish, existentialist, universalist who reads blasphemous anti-Catholic crap by alcoholic Irish writers. A small and elite group, Father. And isn't an alcoholic and Irish redundant? Did I not mention that I'm Irish? I'm okay. <laughs> so, what, what do you... What did you do as a minister? Many, many marriages for those who otherwise uh, could not receive a spiritual service. Also, a lot of funerals, too. <laughs> what's, what's funny about that? I knew a Monsignor who used to say that they were the same thing, weddings and funerals. <laughs> Mary and Barry. <laughs> well, I know why he chose this profession. Calling. Monsignor? Well, feel free to answer. No, no, no. I mean, it was his calling, no. not, not his profession. Oh, I understand now. Early on, I thought it might have been mine, too. Fornication, to any extent, is generally not permitted in our line of work, if you will. Still, there have been the exceptional cases, though. Very regrettably, yes. And I have the feeling that you would have been one of those exceptional clergy. It's good you didn't pursue it further. So what do you think? You remind me of the one about the 90-year-old man who walked into a confessional and told the priest that after 70 years of marriage, on that very day, he had picked up two college co-eds and took them to a hotel where they voluntarily had sex with him three times each. <laughs> the priest, who was a little more than shocked, asked him, why are you telling me this? I mean, what kind of a Catholic are you? <laughs> the old man says, I'm not a Catholic, I'm Jewish, and I'm telling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. How about that? How about this? Uh, the woman who goes to confession and she tells the priest that her boyfriend just that day made her reach orgasm 11 times. 
The priest tells her to squeeze two lemons in a glass and drink it. She says, Father, will my sins be forever washed away? He says, no, but it'll wipe that smile off your face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't remember that. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Now, let's be honest. If I were to have garnered a list of all your sins, every one of them, okay, no. and assign some sort of penance, you'd be out there seeking God's absolution for the next 10 years or more. I'm a priest, but I am still a man. And in some clumsy way, I can understand how things could have happened the way they did for you. So I want you to do this. Remain here in the confessional, all right? I'm going to leave. Uh, I, I, have a, I have a tea time in about 20 minutes or so. And I, I want you to say one prayer, one. the act of co uh, contrition. Uh, uh, do, do you recall that prayer? I do, Father. Okay, good. Then following that, I would like you to contemplate the true nature and extent of your sins over the next 30 minutes or so and ask God for forgiveness. Now, next week, I'd like you to return, same time, same station, as they used to say on the telly, <laughs> and, 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 and come into this confessional. I'd like an update on the week that uh, has followed, okay? Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? I do, Father. Thank you. Okay. Now. I'm out of here. I know that's not the standard line, but I want you to remain here as we had agreed, all right? And, and, and you are forgiven for your sins, provided you do as I've asked in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Remember to mark down your mulligans, too. Most of the time, I wouldn't have it any other way unless there's money riding on the game. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> you will. Say, do you remember the one about the uh, janitor who took over for the priest and a woman confessed to giving oral sex? The janitor didn't know what to assign as penance, so he opened up the, uh, you know, the door to the confessional and asked an altar boy who happened to be standing not too far away. He says, uh, excuse me, he says, what does the priest give for oral sex? And the kid says, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, that'd be hilarious if I weren't a priest. Besides, we tell that joke okay. <laughs> I don't hear you praying. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee. And I detest all my sins because of thy just punishments, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserved of all my life. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to sin no more, and to avoid the near occasions of sin. Father, and I offer them all he put on it, but no cause a land he should get. I prayed as man only to God prayed. My prayers they were spurned and denied. And no matter how just my right was when he had the law at his side. I was young and few years married to one.